Well, here I am coming to you from the new FBB headquarters, which is my laundry room at my house. It's Friday, it's March 27th, and let's see, it's 5.24 a.m. I've been up since 4.15. This has been my time to work and to take care of myself a little bit. I'm at home, most likely you are too. I hope you're staying at home, I hope you're staying safe. And I wanted to talk to you today, I wanted to address you with a video. Fridays are usually days that we send out our FBB uh, functional Friday, functional pump Friday emails. Sometimes we'll give you workout ideas, sometimes we'll give you nutrition tips, we'll announce new things that are happening. I wanted to take this opportunity to connect with you, the audience, and hopefully provide some insight as to how you can take this period of time, which is absolutely crazy, everybody is dealing with it differently, the emotions are up, the emotions are down, stress is high, but how can you take this opportunity and use some fundamental foundational principles of health and fitness to help you get through it, to help you experience it better, to help you stay connected to yourself, manage emotions, and keep your relationships around you strong as opposed to stressed. I don't claim to have all the answers, and to be totally honest, this is now day number 15 I'm starting uh, at home, and there have been lots of challenges. I have not done it perfectly. Trying to run a business with 12 plus employees without being able to see them completely virtually, managing client relationships all over the world, trying to figure out how to be most useful to the audience and provide relevant content, all while trying to take care of a one-year-old and a three-year-old. So I'm full-time parent. Also, my wife is working as well. And so we're playing this juggling game. And, and I don't claim to have the worst of the situations out there, the hardest situations. And in many ways, it's been a true blessing to be here and to spend time with my kids. I've spent more time with them in the last 15 days than I have probably in the last six months, it's, it's absolutely wild to think about. And it makes me actually have to recalibrate my entire life plan because I'm like, what am I missing with them? So there is some silver lining in this for many people. And what I'm noticing over the past two weeks is that without a practice of self-care, without a practice of taking care of our physical bodies, our emotional and mental bodies, it's hard to even see that silver lining. And it's so easy to just get sucked into the negativity of the media, the fear, the doom and gloom, and think, poor me, when is this gonna be over? I wrote a bit about, uh, <clears throat> in uh, recent social media posts, I talked about the stages of grief uh, and that what we're all experiencing is grief. It was an article that was forwarded to me by my wife. And that grief really goes in five stages uh, and that you are likely somewhere in this five stage process where originally it probably started with some sense of denial, like this virus and this pandemic isn't going to, or it's not going to become a pandemic. It's not going to affect me. Then it moves into something along the line of frustration and anger where it's like, oh my gosh, you're making me stay home. Uh, that's, you know, so frustrating. I'm so angry or man, this virus is inconveniencing my life. Man, I'm not going to get to see the rest of the NBA season. Gosh, this thing is closed down. That show I was going to go to, I was so excited about that trip I was going to take. That that anger is real. I experienced it too. I was supposed to go to France with my family and have a, a wonderful vacation, teach FBB over in Europe. And that's definitely not happening. And then step three is sort of the bargaining stage where it's like, oh, well, Hey, if I stay home for two weeks, fine, I'll stay home for two weeks and then this will all blow over and I'll go back to, to my life as it was. And perhaps you're still in that stage too. Am I going to be able to just jump back into life really soon? Because I'm giving up something, so I should get something in return, which is going back to my normal routines. And then fourth is just the, the sadness phase. That is, when's this ever going to end? Will this ever end? And that I think is where a lot of people that I'm in contact with that are in this now two weeks and are starting to see sort of the projected dates of 
life going back to normal be pushed out further. It's that sadness. And then finally, the fifth stage would be acceptance. I have to figure out a new way forward because this is going to keep happening and I don't know how long it will. And if we think in those terms, when we're finally at some stage of acceptance, then it's actually coming up with strategies and plans. How do I make the best of this situation? How do I make this not just, how do I just not make this a bad situation, but how do I turn this into a good situation in some respect? There's no way we're going to change the fact that people are getting sick, that economic factors in this country and in this world are getting really turned upside down. People are losing jobs. Kids are not in school. All of those factors we can't change. So I'm not saying we're going to rewrite the script and say that everything is good. But how can we take this new normal or this new scenario and use tools that we have to find something better and an opportunity within it? So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, and of course, I'm going to be focusing on health and fitness because that's been my calling for my almost my entire life. And it's what I tune into when I think about how to optimize any situation. I've been spending a lot of the last two weeks looking at the relationship between when I put energy into myself and then how it translates into a better experience with everything happening. How does a simple 30 minute movement session get me out of the fear anxiety that I saw that I started to feel when I looked at the news? How does going out for a little bit of fresh air, even if it's just to stand outside my door and just breathe in some sunshine and some fresh air, how does that impact the way I'm handling my, my time with my kids when I'm the sole parent looking after them? How does making a better nutrition choice and picking the right foods for me, how does that ground me and make me feel calm as opposed to reaching for the thing that felt comfortable in the moment, but it wound me up a little bit. It got my blood sugar all dysregulated. So those are some things that I've been feeling and noticing. And, and I truly believe now is the time to really connect with our physical bodies and really connect with health and fitness to create a foundation so that we can navigate all of these stages of grief that people are going through, the emotions that are going high and low, the worry and the uncertainty of the future. I'm grounding myself in the purpose of movement, good healthy behaviors, and I want to give you some ideas on how to make that happen. So there's three things I want to cover today. Number one, this is a theme that I've been hearing from a lot of clients, personal clients all over the world, fans that are on Instagram and doing functional bodybuilding, my coaches for the Revival Strength team and what they're hearing is that people are having a hard time finding space to train. We don't, we don't have the option to go to the gym. Remember, the gym was that sacred space you walk into and you're in your workout. And now there's no distractions. Or at least you have a place where you're going to carve out that 75 minutes, an hour, 90 minutes to just be focused on your fitness. You have to now create that in a new space. You have to create that at home. You have to create that with the distractions of family members running around. You have to now work from home. So now your home is not your place to sleep, your place to work, your place to train. It's got all of these different labels on it. And that's hard for us and for you, I would assume, to then separate out like, where do I really get to focus on me and my movement? And so to, that's, number, that's tip number one. And that's something that I think you can spend a little bit of time thinking about today if you haven't yet figured it out. Where's the physical space in your home that you're going to designate as your training or your movement space? It can be a defined physical space. It might mean uh, breaking down a, the guest room bed that isn't being used. It might mean pushing a, a chair or a couch or a coffee table out of the way for a period of time that you never use anyway. It might mean just finding a three by three uh, square on your living room floor where you lay out whatever little bit of home equipment that you have that's now that's going to be your space and when you step into that space you're going to visualize I'm in the gym I'm in my workout space and this is my time for me what else gets you in the mood to train I have to admit that this shirt that I'm wearing right now 
This is like the first shirt I've put on in weeks. Like I, I've been wearing hoodies and sweatpants and that's it. And uh, I, I, I got dressed up for you guys. Let's, let's just be honest. Um, but when I go to the gym and I go, it's time for my workout, I always put on my, you know, my shorts, my socks. I put on, there's a certain like outfit I like to wear that gets me kind of in the mood. And that's been something I've been going to. So it's like, hey, when the when the sweats come off and the athletic shorts go on and my crew socks go on and I put on my Metcon shoes, it's my time to work out. And that gets me switched into the mode. So think about a physical space. Think about what you're wearing. Think about the music that you put on. Put in some head, you know, headphones or maybe crank up the stereo a little bit in your living room so long as you're not, you know, annoying your neighbors or, you know, your roommates and turn on that music that gets you kind of fired up to train and to work out and to move your body. So these are just some ideas. The other thing is time of day, right? What time of day are you gonna work out? You gotta create schedule, and I've been talking about creating schedule and rhythm so much in the past, now it's more important than ever. Have a schedule. One of my clients, she's now homeschooling her kids, and so they're constantly needing her attention all day. So the only time that she can really carve out for herself is before they're up. And it's a sacrifice that she's making in order to create and find some sense of consistency again. And I encourage you to do the same. For me, it's when Joey goes down for a nap at 10 o'clock, time to train, time for me to move. That's when I get my opportunity. So create your space to train. That's tip number one or, or action item number one for today. Action item number two. Now is not the time necessarily to try and recreate what you were able to do in the gym. Some of us and some of you are fortunate to have a full home gym set up. That's awesome. And if that's the case, then maybe training just kind of continues as it has always. But for the vast majority of you, I'm guessing that you're at home with minimal equipment, don't have access to a lot of weights or any weights, and you're basically having to rethink of like, what, what is it supposed to feel like to do movement? I got used to pushing myself in the gym, getting on the rowing machine and hammering out intervals, lifting heavy weights. And we taught ourselves and we told ourselves a story that that's the only way we can get a good workout and that we can get a good feeling from our training. And the reality is that that's not true. That movement, and there are so many ways to do it. And it's forcing me as a professional to think of all the different ways that you can do this. Movement is still accessible to us and a feeling of getting good training in is still accessible to us. We just have to expand our scope of what that looks like. I can't tell you how many clients in the past week and a half have started a home workout and then given up and just been like, oh man, this just doesn't feel like it used to. I'm just gonna go for a run. Well, I can understand that. Doing air squats at home isn't gonna feel like doing heavy front squats or goblet squats at the gym. Doing good mornings with your hands behind your head is not gonna feel like doing a kettlebell swing uh, on an interval timer. And you're not trying to recreate that. Movement is still important. Doing functional patterns is still extremely important. There's genetic material in our bodies that when we squat, it releases certain hormones and it activates certain neurotransmitters. And that's different than just going for a run. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go for a run. And if you have access to the outdoors, that should be part of your fitness plan. But so should moving. So having a, better, a bigger frame of reference or at least opening up your scope to like, well, what can be my movement plan is important and it doesn't have to look like it did three weeks ago when you were in the gym getting after it. And if you're struggling for ideas, that is what we're here for. I remember when I was younger and I, I say uh, uh, probably like eight years old, my brother and I, uh, my family, we would go up to our uh, we had a home up in Sacramento area, the Sacramento area in California. And it was kind of just like a little, get, uh, it was a small community. There wasn't much going on there. We, off, we often had to just kind of create things to do for ourselves. And I remember that I used to love to do like push-ups and like hang from things and try and do pull-ups and just like, I was just getting into the idea of moving my body. 
Like that was that was training for me back then. I remember my brother and I, we like hammered together some two by fours so that I could like hang on the thing and like do some pull-ups. I didn't know what those exercises were. I'd never seen a barbell, but it got me excited to just move. And I was inspired by that. Fast forward 20, you know, something years. And of course, my vision is like, well, if I don't have a barbell to do snatches and an assault bike to do sprints and these things to do all of this fitness, then I, I can't, I can't train. But the truth was that it was, it's more simple than that. And that we've kind of taught ourselves this story that it has to look like this, but it could really look like this. So it's an opportunity to reconnect with why we move in the first place. It's a movement practice to keep us elevated in our mood, to keep us grounded in our emotions, to keep us healthy. And I truly believe with these FBB principles that we have to offer you, that you can make a minimalist training program absolutely very effective and give you a feeling that you enjoy and that supports your life. It might not be the same feeling that we can get you in the gym, but it's a very potent, powerful feeling. So that was number two. We're reconnecting to why we move in the first place and we're not trying to replace what we were doing in the gym with something at home that's gonna give us the exact same feeling. It's not going to happen necessarily, but that shouldn't stop you from trying. All right, the last thing that I would say is time for you to focus in on. It is your nourishment, right? The food that we put in our body. People's food rhythms are so connected to their lifestyle rhythms. I get up, I eat breakfast, I drop the kids, I go to the office, I work for a little bit, everyone takes lunch, that's when I eat next. Then there's a, a lull after lunch, I do some things, I usually take a 3 p.m. break, go to the coffee stand, get a coffee, have a little snack, then it's di right? So your meals follow the cadence of your day. Hey, we all have a new cadence to our day. We're at home. Some of you have found good schedules already. Many of you have not. And if you have not found a good schedule at home, I imagine that your food and when you're hungry and your hunger cues and how much to eat and all that is just starting from scratch. And that is understandable. We haven't had enough time in this new rhythm to develop a new plan. So here's the approach to developing a new plan or a new way of tackling your food. You gotta start writing everything down. This is the time to be tracking your food. I truly believe that. I think it's a very powerful tool to bring awareness to what you're doing in this very uncertain time. Are you snacking a lot more than normal? Are your meals getting smaller because you're maybe moving less and your appetite is kind of waning or is it your emotions are taking over and your anxiety is suppressing some of your appetite, you're stressed? Or maybe you're emotionally eating more than you normally would. The stress is causing you to reach for more snacks or reach for the things in your house that are not super nourishing to you, to your body, to your goals, to what you want. But you don't know that until you're writing it down. You'll feel it, you'll have a sense, man, I'm struggling with this. Start writing it down. How much did I have? What did I eat? I would encourage you to get on a fitness tracking app. I use my fitness pal. And at a time like this, it is extremely helpful to keep me grounded in what I'm actually putting in my body. So we start with just creating accountability, what you're eating, and then you can start to move upward and start to think about how can I make ch uh, effective change and improvements to what I'm putting in my body. I think I said it a couple weeks ago to in an article or in a newsletter, or maybe it was just a discussion with uh, the team of coaches, but um, it's nutrition is relatively simple. It requires really good tracking, and then it requires enough consistency within that system of what you're doing to be able to make good analysis. And what do I mean by that? Write everything down, do the same thing for two weeks, the data that comes back to you, which is your body weight, the way you feel, the way you look, the way you perform, whatever, whatever results or data you want to track. When that comes back after two weeks, you know what you did and you did it consistently enough to be able to say, okay, this is the way I feel. This either worked or it didn't work. 
So that's what I want you to, to lean into now is creating that accountability and consistency. You can choose the times of day that you want to have your meals. You can plan out a menu each day. This is what I, I want to eat. You can prepare quality foods that you're going to have in your fridge that you're going to say, I'm only going to eat these quality prepared foods, but at the very least start tracking. So those are my three tips for today. Find a designated space to train. Remember sound, your outfit, the physical space, where your equipment is lined up in your house, the shoes you like to put on or the, the shoes you don't put on because you're inside, whatever, make that physical space happen. Two, remember, we're not trying to do what we did in the gym at home and recreate that. We have to be open-minded to a new way of creating a movement practice. It's not gonna necessarily be as intense, but if we focus on quality and we make it really, really uh, a consistent practice of doing all of the movement patterns that you've come to know are important, I actually believe you are going to start to feel better. Remember, I've said this for, for several years now, intensity is not the goal. It's quality over intensity. Now is the chance to lean into that quality because we don't have the tools like 300 pound barbells to maybe push the intensity like we do in the gym. And then the last thing is food. It is getting accountable to what you're putting in your body. Start writing it all down. There'll be more to come in the weeks ahead as we're all continuing to stay at home and hopefully stay very safe and help in this global pandemic. But in the weeks to come, we can talk more about the quality of your nourishment, the food that you're eating, and give you more tips on how to make that a central focus of this time because it's a powerful, powerful thing to be getting your mind and your health and fitness wrapped around is what you're nourishing yourselves with. So what I wanna leave you with is two things. If anything in this video resonated with you, please take action today. If you're struggling right now to find your way through the health and fitness landscape, you are not alone. I, my team, we coach over 300 clients worldwide and many of them who have good practices already in place are having a hard time. They're leaning on their coaches to help support them figure out their path, their best path in their unique circumstances. We're offering right now, no commitments long-term to start working with a revival strength coach. You can hire a coach today to help design your individual plan to navigate this and the future as best you can. So please give us a, give us a little shout. We're happy to jump on a call with you today to talk about what it's like to maybe start working with us for individual coaching and to take the FBB principles, the nutrition and lifestyle principles, and find that perfect marriage for you right now in the stressful time of life. And then secondly, if you are just looking for a way to get by with minimalistic equipment, body weight workouts, we've got the functional bodybuilding persist minimalist program that is available to you right now. That's a free guide. You can go to our website. You can click links in my Instagram bio. You can get that downloaded right away and there'll be a link in this email as well to get to it. That's going to be a program that's going to allow you with very little stuff at home to experience some functional bodybuilding. So I encourage you to try that. And again, I'm wishing you all the very best in this stressful time and that there are going to be lows. And if we can use some tools and some health and fitness principles to help ground us so that we can actually be exposed and see the silver linings that are here, I believe this could be a very powerful time for you. So thinking about you all, I love you all, and we'll see you soon. Take care.